Hey guys, Sean Peterson here today with a video post about Coast Salish design elements. Now I know when I started, I wish somebody posted something like this, so I'm hoping I could help somebody learn because there's not a lot out there. So let's get started. First, there's a circle or oval. There are crescents. And there are trigons. Now people use several different terms to describe the shape, but I use trigon. And in this particular illustration, on the left, we have a positive trigon, which is painted in, and the negative, which is left blank. Now, this final term, extended crescent, is one that I've come to use just recently, and before I used the term U-form to describe this shape. Now, U-form is a term that's borrowed from terminology that discuss form line art. Form light art is made primarily of the ovoid at the top left and U-form shape upper right. And on the lower side of this illustration, you can see the overlapping shapes coming together to make a framework of sorts. Now, because Coast Salish art is based off of low relief carving sculpture, in this case, a spindle whirl with a bird image, you can see that these carved out areas, even though they resemble somewhat a U-form, it's not consistent enough in a wireframe approach, and form line is not really what Salish art is, and I'll talk about that later. So in this example of a Salish eagle, we can see that if we reverse the positive and get rid of the contained field on the outside, the black, it's really hard to read what's even going on in this design. Even though we have the containing elements, they're only really successful by being pierced through a silhouette. So this really simulates what the carving tradition is, carving these areas through. Now another characteristic of this design tradition is this analogy of dropping a pebble in calm water to get ripples. Now from these concentric circles moving outward, we can see the crescent and trigons move away from those central areas, but they don't merge together. Now in this illustration of a serpent comb from the Peabody Museum collection, we can see the arrows are pushing, suggesting where the movement is coming from, following in line with that pebble and calm water analogy these central areas push out these shapes and help your eye move around the design field and makes it interesting. And this comb has been imitated and reprinted and done by a number of artists, myself included, because it's so successful and unique. Now to go back to the form line discussion that we had mentioned earlier, here's a sped up version of what one could paint a form line system like and we see that by building it up there's a continuous framework made of the black area the black space or positive and within that space it's made up of these positive elements of the ovoid and the u-form and other various shapes now if we try to do the same thing painting in the double head serpent design there's no one consistent black form but there is a consistent negative space made up of the crescent and trigon, so it's really quite the opposite. And because I had mentioned before, the design tradition is based off of relief carving, meaning we carve these elements out like laser cutting paper. So it's the pierce through areas or relief carved areas in this carving that we can see that the design tradition comes from and why these shapes are the way they are. So I hope that made sense, and uh, again, as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, be sure to post them in the comment field, and thanks for visiting.